love telling lies on me They know that I'm the one, they got their eyes on me They know I'm here to stay and I won't leave We do this for the fans, for your eyes only Just watch closely, bet they all gon' see They don't f*** with us, but they still gon' pray Don't talk to me, man, you gotta show me If it ain't ISO, then it ain't in It's such isolation from all negativity They try to bend over, but can't get rid of me We gon' do our thing until infinity Beware the industry, please stay in control of your dignity so when you want to start modding consoles, the first thing you really need to know is how these things power on. So they take batteries in the back, that's obvious. But if there's a problem with the console, the very next thing is, you should start with the power source. The power comes into the batteries, where does it go next? How does it get to the system? And how does it operate? I'm going to show you the power switch in the Game Boy Color, the schematic, how it works, as well as replacing it and creating a brand new switch. So let's jump in and take a look. So if you Google online for Game Boy schematics, Game Boy Color schematics, uh, you'll tend to find them fairly easy. Um, so this is one we've found online nice and easy. Now you don't necessarily need the schematics to do the work, um, and half the time the schematics aren't right, so it's purely just for a reference and a quick visual to check what to expect before you look at the real hardware. Uh, so don't worry too much about needing schematics, these are purely assistive. The part we're interested in is here, the top right corner of the schematic. Uh, we can see here it's got the DC jack in, the battery, uh, the power switch here, which is what we want to figure out the starting point of, and then a regulator here, and then the power goes off to the system. So if we just take a closer look at this area here, and let me explain what's going on. So either side here, the battery contacts, uh, these are the springs in your Game Boy Color. These are the things that you will see uh, you have the negative and you have the positive uh, battery springs and the power then flows in through um, here it goes through an inductor goes through a fuse and then goes into what looks like pin 3 of the power switch and then the other side which is the actual system this goes to the voltage regulator at the bottom right of the Game Boy Color it receives its power from the C pin of the switch which is meaning common because common is the part where you're switching between so the way a switch works typically is, imagine these dots here are just copper, uh, which they typically are inside of the switch itself, they're just gold plated copper, uh, and there's breaks between them so they're not making contact. The slider that slides the switch back and forward is just another piece of metal. So as you can see visualized here, if the switch was in the on position, it would join pin one through the switch, through the metal and down to common, effectively making common join to one like it's a straight line so that the line just goes straight through here when you slide the switch to the middle position it would disconnect one from common and connect common to two which currently goes nowhere in the schematic so it's an unused pin and then when you slide it to the on position uh, this pin would be around here and this pin would be around here and you would then join common to pin three uh, pin 3 as we know is the battery voltage coming in so what would happen is then the power from the batteries comes in goes through 3 out through common and into the regulator to the rest of the system so that's how we'd expect this to work you can see here as well if we wanted to diagnose faults we could always start at the battery contacts right here and check from the battery contact if we have contact to em6 and then after em6 do we have contact to the start of F1. F1 is a fuse which will break if there's too much current so we could also check continuity between here and here and continuity is just meaning they are physically connected with low resistance so it's like they are physically connected. Uh, ultimately where you'd want to start if your console doesn't power up is to check the battery terminal of the positive going all the way to pin 3 of the power switch and then potentially if you have connection from pin 3 to battery but you still don't have power you could slide the switch to the on position and check if you have continuity between the battery pin and then the c pin which means it's going through three into c and out uh, we start there with any dead console because if it doesn't receive power nothing else is going to work this would also mean if we wanted to detect a faulty switch or just bypass the switch for any reason just to simply prove our knowledge that the power switch just joins pin three to pin c we could leave the switch in the off position and directly apply battery voltage to pin C. So we could either wire from the battery contact to C, bypassing the switch completely, 
or we could just use a bench power supply and apply 3 volts directly to C and the console should power up irrelevant of where the switch is currently selected to. So that's enough talk on the schematic and the general overview of what we should expect when we have batteries inserted. That the power should flow through here, through the inductor, through the fuse and to the switch and then from the switch into the regulator. We'll talk about the regulator separately and I'll go through how that works and how to build a new one. But for now let's focus on the power switch. So let's jump onto the bench now and take a look at the real hardware. So we'll start by removing the six tri-wing screwdrivers from the back of the shell. The three Phillips head screws from the inside of the shell. And then we can disconnect the LCD by pulling the ribbon tabs back and removing the ribbon cable. Lift the board out of the way, gently twist the shell and lift the screen out. For testing purposes, we'll just quickly reconnect the screen. We can see here the ground and positive terminals of the battery pins where the AA batteries connect. And here is the positive terminal of the battery that from the schematic should connect to pin three of the power switch. Let's take a closer look at that power switch. And as you can see, we clearly have pin three, two, C and one. And when in the off position, it visibly looks like the pin one and C would connect to each other. Based on the schematic, there is technically a middle position when the switch is in the middle, it should connect C and two together and disconnect one and three. So they are not connected to anything. We can test this later with a multimeter. And then when we slide the switch to the on position, it should connect C and three together. So now let's use a bench power supply to power the Game Boy Color. So we don't have to use AA batteries. And we can also read the current being drawn and set the voltage as we need. So let's turn on the power supply at three volts. We'll connect the ground pin of the power supply to the ground pin of the battery terminal. And we'll touch the positive pin to the positive terminal. You can notice the power switch is in the on position and the Game Boy comes on. And if we turn the switch off, the Game Boy goes off. And if we turn the switch back on again, the Game Boy comes on. So we have a functional and working Game Boy Color at the minute and a working power switch. But let's test that theory. If we leave the power switch in the off position and touch on pin C, you can see the Game Boy powers up, disregarding the power switch position. This is good proof that the power switch joins pin three to pin C, but we can also test that further. Let's grab our multimeters and set them into continuity mode. In continuity mode, it gives a beep when the two wires are connected. So we know when we've touched the wires together, we get an audible beep. So now let's put one side of the multimeter to the positive pin of the battery terminal. And this should connect to pin three of the power switch only when the power switch is in the off position based on the schematic. So let's just check that now. Then we can see it successfully connects to pin three. Let's make sure in the on position, three and C join together. And they do. Let's grab the multimeter, turn it to resistance mode and measure the quality of the switch by measuring between pin three and common while in the on position. This should be almost zero ohms as a dead short, but as you can see, it's in the hundreds of ohms. So this power switch needs a clean. So that shows how the power switch works in the Game Boy Color. It's very similar in the other consoles, but a good starting point to understanding the hardware and creating mods of your own starts with how the power comes into the console, how it should work, and finding out what limits the console has. This allows you to then create your own power regulators, your own amps, your own screens, anything you really want. Once you understand the basic hardware, you have a lot more power. So stay tuned if you want to create your own hardware, learn about schematics, circuit boards, and specifically how retro consoles work and how I create my mods. Get off. I'm trying to do a video. Get off. Drop. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Do you want some chicken? Hey. Yeah. Want some chicken? <laughs>